Hello and welcome out here everybody here to the UGC Highlander Season 16 Week 6 matchup of DK versus MTS here out on Asheville. I'm of course joined out here by my co-cast tonight, Atwas. How you doing tonight? I'm doing fantastic. How about you, Sikafu? I'm doing great. This is probably one of the best matchups, matchups this season here. DK uh, currently uh, in MTS, kind of in the top three teams, definitely coming into this season, uh, kind of currently ranked in the power rankings at one and two. Uh, so definitely going to have a good matchup here, and especially going to be a little bit interesting after this update that came out on Thursday last week or Wednesday. It was one of those two days gunmetal update, which uh, actually kind of uh, gave some upheaval to some of the different metas. I don't know. What are you expecting to see a little bit different here tonight? Well, I'm definitely expecting to see a bit more difference in minigun play. A lot more miniguns are currently viable. Maybe some Natasha, maybe some Tommy Slow. You might see a bit more roaming heavy going on. And of course, there's that update to Engineer that came out as well. But I'm sure you can tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, absolutely. With the update to the Jag and the kind of nerf slightly to the mini sentry gun, it'll be interesting to see kind of what engineers are going to be choosing out here tonight. Um, you know, I was kind of watching some of the STV uh, beforehand here and talking to some of the team captains, and it seems that most of the engineers are sticking to mini sentry guns, but we're definitely seeing some play of uh, the level 3 sentry gun uh, kind of in the shutter area using that kind of the peak with the Wrangler and stuff like that, which can easily be shut down with the coordination of a spy, but if you can't get the spy there in time, then it's going to do a lot of damage, and it can basically shut down a push by itself versus the mini century, which is that kind of consistent output. And kind of talk, talking to Carl about it, one of the interesting things that uh, kind of you, you have the benefit of when you have mini centuries is usually that means you can keep a dispenser forward, keep your team healed up uh, for someone besides your medic who uh, did have some updates themselves, but Valve uh, or UGC currently is not having those in. They actually have a ban on being able to pick up the medics' uh, uber charges and stuff like that. So that's going to be staying uh, kind of the traditional as it was before. Uh, but here out on Asheville tonight, I don't know, what are you, who are you looking forward to seeing play? Oh man, I am definitely looking forward to seeing Yosh on Sniper. Not only is he a great sniper, but he's also a new pickup as well. Boat team had their final game a few weeks ago, and Yosh and Muma both hopped ship. No pun intended. No, really, really, no pun intended. I am so sorry for that. And so Never they are apologize. the new kids on the block. <laughs> They're the new kids on the block. And so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how that'll turn out. And Akuma as well. I've heard he's doing absolutely nuts with his headshots. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I got excited. I thought we had a ready up. We have about 18 in the server. Uh, so we're getting there. But yeah, Yosh and Muma obviously have the pickups here. Um, Yosh, who is kind of surprised, I don't know about other people, but he's definitely surprised me in how much of a dominance. I mean, I think you definitely have to put him in the terms of top three snipers in the game, if not kind of contest contesting for the best up there. Uh, and Muma, who was playing Demo Man on boat now, switching back to Soldier, a class that he knows really well. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see kind of how he kind of switches off uh, back to the Demo Man, which the Demo Man also do have a buff going on right now. Uh, as they do not have fall off damage, is my understanding. And so the demo man, you know, the oh so weak demo man, the demo man who can't get any kills or do any <laughs> damage, needed a buff, or I think they accidentally got a buff. And so they're going to be a little bit more powerful uh, coming into this game just because of that kind of damage ramp up not being there. Um, poor do you wanna... demo. Go ahead. Yeah, poor, poor demos. Yeah. Do you want to, let's, uh, do you have team roster up in front of you? Do you want to go over the roster list with me? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, why don't you take uh, DKs? Got it. We've got Benny on Scout, Aegis on Soldier, Spiral be playing the Pyro class, Xan on Demo, Carl on Heavy, Josh on Engineer, Metaway on Medic, Axio on Sniper, that'll be fun, Yosh versus Axio, and HNG on Spy. Yeah, on MTS, we got Enigma, the Beast on Scout, Muma, the new soldier, as we were talking about, Katsy, the ever so lovely on Pyro, Giraffe on Demo Man, Lunacide on Heavy, Spamfest, go Spamfest on uh, Engineer. <laughs> Harblu on Medic, and Yosh on Sniper, and of course Akuma, as you were talking about, on Spy. One of the other matchups uh, I'm kind of in interested to see tonight is Harblu has a history of uh, not looking behind him, um, as he is <laughs> not the most well-known to not be picked by Spy. So I think another interesting matchup will just be H&G versus Harblu, and if Harblu is going to be able to uh, keep himself alive, or if his team's going to be able to keep him alive, uh, kind of coming into this and as well as I mean uh, the other big matchup I'm probably the like one the most excited is that Enigma uh, sorry Enigma versus Banny here Banny obviously switching from Demo Man to Scout from last season Scout in uh, sixes and Enigma who is 
just one of the most dominant Highlander scouts I've ever seen play the game. Uh, and it'll be really interesting to see kind of how those two match up. Um, what are your, I mean, have you seen Benny play or, or do you have any, have you, like, what are your thoughts on the matchup yourself? Um, honestly, I haven't seen Benny Billy. I've only really seen scrims. I haven't seen too many matches. I've been a little bit out of the loop Highlander wise. I will be the first to admit that, but, um, he's been doing really well with his team. That would be DK. And so I would honestly put it fair bit even. And, you know, just with Asheville being so close to Coldplay, I expect to see a lot of dominance coming out of from the, coming out from the sixes players who are playing on the flank. Yeah, so what what are the kind of traditional play styles you kind of see out of the flank classes on Asheville? Oh man, just getting aggressive in the lobby. <laughs> um, just the more forward you can get, just a lot of people bombing in, getting on bats, getting super aggressive. I know the more aggressive a flank is, the easier it is, from what I've seen at least. Yeah, especially in Asheville itself, it lends itself to, I mean, the flank play can be just devastating if done correctly. Um, it's so easy to get to the enemy team's side. Uh, you know, it, it, I don't know. It's like, it's one of those things where it's like, uh, if you cannot contest the other flank, like, you know, it's one of these things where it's like, if the other flank's too aggressive, then your flank might have to deal with them or they're going to do damage. And if your flank has to deal with them on their side, your flank's not getting aggressive enough. So it kind of creates this kind of weird game of like, you know, your flank needs to defend, but it also needs to get aggressive. Um, so we got 18 in the server here. We should have pretty shortly. So we should be getting live, uh, very quickly here. Uh, thoughts coming into this match. Uh, who do you think is going to win? Where are you, you going to put your uh, stat line down? Oof, what's just final score? Hit me with it. Um, you know what? I think I'm actually going to go with MTS to win this. I, I can't give you a score, not off the top of my head. I have to think about that more, but I think I'm erring on the favor of MTS a little bit just because of those new pickups, you know? New pick. All right. Uh, I'm going to go with... I'll go with DK. Got to right, gotta be the opposite of you, but I, I think DK definitely... Uh, you know, they play well together. They've been a long-standing team to pick up, but Banny has done uh, exceptionally well for them. So I think uh, DK is going to take it, but I think it'll be a close game either way, probably like a 4-2 or 4-3 game. Um, definitely will be pretty back and forth here as I think, yeah, we got, I think we should get a ready up here pretty shortly as we're getting going here. Guys, what do you think out in chat? Toss out your predictions out in chat before we get going here. The plugins are being loaded, and here we go. It is live. The fix up the before timer is ready to go, and we're gonna get the demo man's coming out uh, to mid. So both taking out on the ramp side. Nothing going lower right now. Both demo men kind of spamming. Actually, the demo man on blue here. That's giraffe. Is actually putting up some sticky. He's guarding his own house. As we see, actually, H&D goes down pretty early there. Actually, I'm sorry, that was just a dead ringer. He got me with that. And Axio Mac does go down. So no sniper here on the DK side. He's actually taking a few frags, and the aggression coming out of MTS is actually the scout trying to push in there. Enigma with the soda popper, and they're basically going to get this point for free. You'll have to excuse me for a second there. Uh, my game just froze. We do have some level 3 sentry stats coming out there from DK, however, that was really easily taken down. Mumo went behind there, and they are all up in lobby. We have Pyro v Pyro going on here, getting some pretty nice reflects, and we're getting some contesting as well. Metaway does have 100% Uber. Both medics are sitting at a full charge, and so it's really just the point, and who gets the force first, or who maybe gets the drop first, as we are getting some aggression over here on point. Yeah, actually, we had Zan kind of come across the point, trying to do something. We finally get the pop off on Harbu. It's going to give a nice, a little bit better Uber onto the... Uh, DK side here as uh, MTS is just electing to back up. They did lose some players in that forward push earlier. Here comes a soldier in over the top, gets him spammed down, not able to get any reflex on that as so many players are low for DK here as they're trying to push onto the point. Multiple are in the red. SG needs a scout trying to peek onto something but not decides to back up there as they kind of fall underneath point but so many actually lost on the MTS side. This is going to push a force up onto but actually as I say that Enigma comes behind, takes down Metalway. So that's going to give the advantage back to Harbu, but so many down for MTS. That's going to get the point back in the favor of DK here with a minute already off the clock. Wow, what a back and forth. Uh, something that did happen. HNG actually took down Lunacide pretty early there, so that was a good play. He has been running Thomas Love, and uh, Katsy's actually on Scorch Shot as well. So we are seeing a bit of an unlock thing going down there. Carl is on that Natasha, which is great, doing that slowdown. We do have a repush coming back in here. MTS sort of flooding that point, stacking it, seeing what they could do. Ban takes down Muma, and uh, Carl actually gets stabbed by Akuma down there, I believe, under point or beside it. And we do have a level 2 sentry in Shutter right there. We do her does get popped, flashing it, not much is going on. Sentry gun does get taken down, Enigma taking that off. And that is a pretty handicap. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if Harblue needed a pop there with seeing the 100% Uber. I know Harblue is kind of one of those people's like, if I got an Uber, like, I'm going to pop it. Like, why not? Let's take that aggression there. But they seem to pretty much take the point for free. I mean, they had so many frags in their favor here. Uh, but it doesn't really matter now as Metaway does is at the 90%, about to be at 100%, kind of pushing up onto his bats here. Muma does kind of peek in, but decides to back off right away. As actually, Draft has a really aggressive position over on the house here as uh, some damage comes out on the DK side. But they do pop the Uber on Banny and onto Zan. Uh, Banny chasing down the combo actually decides to back out the medic not with him here but that is going to bring the point back in the dk favor here but hard blue is at 80 percent so they're going to be repushing this pretty shortly absolutely really nice there oh here we go muma coming in through shutter didn't really pick up anything but got a little bit of damage off and we are having a significant player advantage in the favor of dk they're going to be able to hold on to that point for a good amount of time but hard blue does have 100 percent uber he will be going in there we still have that sort of battle of the mini versus level three. that level three seems to be going down quite a bit though so maybe they'll have to rethink that strategy yeah, level 3 is a hard thing to hold on to. It looked like MTS was going to push there a little bit beforehand. Oh, the Spy actually just a little bit too late. On to Harblue. Harblue does get the pop off uh, as they decide to push. It looks like they're going to go underneath the point as the combo is kind of holding on the opposite side of it. Spamfest goes down as well as Yoshi and Muma. So MTS is seeing so many players here. It's just a heavy mini sentry gun onto the point. Heavy actually going for the flank onto the combo. Is it going to be effective here? Probably going to get caught on himself. Yes, Luna side does go down here as Metaway is going to hold on to that 100% Uber. And Enigma's going to try to cap the point by himself, but he's not going to be that effective here as DK is just sitting right there. Absolutely. It's really good to have a flexible combo to move down to underneath or water, I suppose, back over to Shutter, back and forth. And finally, the Uber does get popped out using over there, Metaway finally using it. And uh, that they didn't really pick up anything with that, did they? Yeah, I'm not sure what the call was there. He actually, Metaway actually popped, uh, popped a little bit of the Uber onto the scout there. Actually, Soldier in on behind. Oh. And Muma does take down Metaway with the help of Enigma. And that's going to be perfect as Harblue is sitting at 100%. Look at them already rolling onto the point. And Soldier actually comes in over top, gets one rocket onto the onto Harblue, but does get that force off. Muma, I'm sorry, Harblue is going to be able to stay alive there as Aegis did get a nice play that's going to get the force off at least here as they do capture the point. But some nice spam coming down out of Zan and the Engineer, but Zan and it, the Engineer are going to go down for the troubles there and almost everybody dead here for DK as MTS is going to recapture the point with a minute six left on the clock. Oh man, I gotta have to watch, I'm going to have to watch Carl. He's underneath here, he's still alive. Maybe he can get something working here? Nah, not quite. Managed to take down Katsu with that Natasha, but that being said, it looks like MTS is finally going to get that point even though they had a pretty solid hold on it there for a little while. Ben is going to contest this a little bit back out, but you know. Yeah, we're seeing some contesting here out of MTS as they're trying to get onto the point. Banning with the help of Zan takes down the heavy right there. It's actually the soldier. Age is coming in over the top, gets one rocket onto Harblue, but not enough as he's going to get killed. He's trying to rocket jump away, and here comes the Uber out from MTS. It's actually just a dumb man in the scout. Enigma comes in on takes down Banny now onto the heavy, but the heavy's going to win that fight with the help of Josh, who has a level one sentry gun wrangling through the window. And now he's going to help get onto the point, and there's a counter level one sentry gun on the other side. That does go down. Times two on the point. 16 seconds left on the clock as they are capturing this, but slowly they're getting distracted on the point as the soldier actually came over the top, got some damage onto Metaway. Is the point going to be captured? Seven seconds left on the clock. Uber does come out from Metaway, but it's just on the demo man and scout, and they're, they're not going to be able to get anything with this. No, but you know it honestly, better than... Oh! Ag uh, Yosh gets a really nice shot there on Axio. They've been going at it back and forth, and uh, the snipers have been doing pretty well. We do have Giraffe contesting a little bit, but that Wrangled Sentry in Shutter is just going to do quite a little bit there. It's really nice to have that Sentry there. You can close it whenever. The combo is currently underneath right here. Oh man, Akuma's behind. He's on the medic. So he, can do he doesn't quite get anything down. It said he opts to go quite a way, and um, MTS is going to be able to get on that point. Pop Uber on it. They're going to make sure they can contest it. They only have to it's an overtime. It's an overtime. They got this. And point one to MTS. Yeah, that kind of got, uh, DK got a little bit stuck out there. I think they decided to go underneath. They tried to push up behind MTS. MTS, I mean, that's the thing. is like when you try to wrap a team by going underneath, if the other team knows what you're doing, it's kind of a spam point right there. It's a good place to hold and kite, but it's a difficult place to push through. As we are coming on to the second point here, first round, as you said, went down to MTS. Uh, Muma gets an early kill onto Spyro there, so no Pyro here on the DK side, but Yosh and Enigma actually down early for MTS as well here, as Zan and Aegis doing some good damage early on here, as it looks like DK is going to come away with this first point, as Harblue actually went down there to Banny. Man, Banny and HNG just 
double teamed that medic. They got on him and he went down real fast between the two of them, let me tell you. I feel like there could be like some sort of movie name that. I, I probably should make that joke here, but we do get the point <laughs> captured in the point of uh, DK as uh, Medway sitting at the 100%. Harblu just getting respawned at 20% as they're getting regrouped here. Actually, who is way in the backfield on their side? Looks like it's a spy doing some recon, actually decloaking behind Demoman onto Giraffe. Oh, but gets caught up by Cassie doing a nice job catching h and out there as they are on the bats here, but they got to be careful. It's a little bit of a sniper sideline as uh, Muma and Lunaside do go down here as they're trying to get aggressive and Medway down to 60 HP but still holding on to that uber charge not popping it yet as they are holding underneath here being contested Absolutely, it does look like however uh, DK has moved back onto mini sentry so I guess that little 3 strat wasn't working out for them but it sure was working out for NTS they do have a level 2 over in Shudder and uh, we do have Carl just being really aggressive with this Natasha, his team sort of holding water, holding underneath, doing what they can, putting spam out, but both medics are sitting at 100% uber, and so it's basically just a term of picks. Axio goes down, Enigma gets straight on him, and Spyro gets a nice headshot, HNG gets caught out, and it looks like we're just gonna have a mess of players trying to contest that water bit, getting on point, and the uber does finally get popped, it does look like DK's gonna move out with that uber, gonna back out of that position, and oh, Metaway got caught in that shutter. It just got absolutely demolished by a really nice pipe there from Giraffe, and that is MTS's point. Yeah, Metaway, they're holding underneath the point. Uh, Metaway went down actually to 10 HP. Enigma is just being so quiet. Like, his movement style is so minimal, but so aggressive. I love it. And he went down, actually took down uh, Metaway down to 10 HP before the Uber came off. And then Metaway got caught out by the roller, actually, as he was uh, coming through the shutter area. Which is probably, like, the most brutal way to die as a medic here. As a Harblu is seeing that 100% Uber, so they got to be careful pushing on this point. we got to make sure that Metaway doesn't get caught in here. As they're playing a little bit uh, different, I mean, they're kind of playing different this time. Actually, Yoke takes down Metaway, trying to cross the point there. Got to be careful about the sight lines here. But Harblu did go down as well uh, to Axial Medic, who dropped him. So, kind of a little bit of an uber medic, uh, both snipers taking down the respective medics here, as Zan trying to get aggressive, but that's not going to do anything against a wrangled sentry gun that's still not really being contested. Finally, the pyro does try to do something, but no, he goes down as well, and so many frags going in the way of spam that's there, who's defending the point. My goodness, that sentry gun, when not contested well, can do so much work. I mean, you gotta pick one thing to focus on, and DK just absolutely got demolished there. At one point, there are only three players left alive. They did get the spawn. Axie's gonna be peeking Shutter over there just a little bit, and we do see a crits play on MTS. So I'm excited. I'm I'm ready for this. With the stickies, I'm ready for something ridiculous to happen. Please make it happen, yo. <laughs> and Muma and Enigma actually on the back side of Bats takes down Metaway and Zan respectively so both of them go down everybody's so low on dk only three alive and both two of those are so low uh aegis is, might get away with four hp here he's way in the backfield actually dancing around he does get the med pack but he's gonna get taken out and that's virtually a wipe here for the dk i'm sorry for mts as they're holding on to this point a minute and eight seconds left on this clock and they're dominating this round Oh, absolutely. Harblue did make it out of life. He does have full crits. There's only 20% Uber to contest him. So, I don't know if that got called out or not. I don't think. I'm sure somebody saw it by now, but... They're just looking. They're waiting for something to happen here. They're waiting for people to get on the point. We do have another level 1 sentry being built in Shutter level 1 versus level 2. And people just jumping around the point, trying to make stuff happen. HNG gets taken out by Lunaside, who catches him out really quickly with his uh, Tommy Slav there, which has been buffed really well. And uh, just getting a lot of aggression over here. Banny's trying to get on the point, trying to make stuff happen. Back and forth. Back and forth. Yeah, we're getting some aggression here here out of Harbour. Actually, it's popped up into the air. Surf's it as Zan is come, trying to come out with the pyro from the other side again. That just doesn't seem to be working out here. As they're going to get the 20 second countdown coming down to the clock. The level 2 sentry gun finally does go down in the shutter, but Zan does go down as well. So no demo man. On this final push, 10 seconds left on the clock. Harblu getting onto the point. Banny trying to contest that times two onto this point. Katsu does a good job taking down Banny there. Actually, Matt does take down Yosh, but again, this is going to get into overtime here. And is DK going to be able to retake this point? So much damage out on the point. Carl does get on the point as well. And it looks like we are going to get a recapture. Only three alive for MTS here. Uh, draft does go down. It's only two alive for MTS, and this capture is going to go in the favor, but... Oh, the spy is going to... No, no. The Kuma's not able to get it, and <laughs> Metaway actually went down there to Muma again uh, a little bit earlier, so he's going to respawn right now, but jeez, Muma has Metaway's number right now. 
Oh, absolutely. Uh, Hard Blue actually did drop crits there, and so he's back up on Uber. We do have an Uber beat Uber situation once more. We're getting a really aggressive jump over here by Mumi. He's gonna wrap around, go through lobby, see what he can find. Gets absolutely not, not quite. He has Spyro's number, and he almost died to Afterburn there, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. And so here we go, we have a bit more aggression moving in here from DK, but Muma's still behind. He's doing some work there, and Metaway went down to him again. Muma's got a hot domination on him, and he's not stopping anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, Muma is just doing crazy work getting behind here, as we have 48 seconds left on the clock. We do have the sentry gun up in the shutter, help with the pyro, but MTS, I mean, they basically their point to take as they're getting so aggressive across it, but Aegis comes over the top, helping with Josh, getting out that damage, does take down on the point in 35 seconds, and suddenly MTS not looking as strong. Now, we do have Harpley sitting at this 100%, so are they going to be pushing with this? They did switch back to Uber, so it should be a pretty clean push as Metaway at 33%, 20 seconds left in the clock, final push coming up for MTS to take this round. Oh man, the Uber comes out though, out through Shutter, and here we go, MTS Ubered on point. And uh, they're just gonna try and hold it, but they actually, they need to cap it. All they have to do is cap the point, and it's just a meat grinder on the point right now. Giraffe goes down to Agent, uh, Spampa takes down HNG, and there we go, DK. DK? No. MTS to get that second point. Wow. Yeah, M MTS, uh, really nice job with that final Uber. I think one p thing that people tend to do when they push with an Uber in that situation is like, all right, let's push with the Uber and run a cross point. MTS was like, let's push with the Uber and get damage out and stand on the point. Um, and I mean, honestly, I mean, the actually the frags were just about the same, uh, but MTS just forcing that capture time forces, uh, you know, the other team DK to have to react to that as we get out here early. Uh, which advantage? I'm looking at the stats right now. Looks like Zan's getting out some early damage onto the point. Uh, but MTS seems to be taking a lot of ground here as the Heavy's getting aggressive across this point with the Tomasov, but he gets punched for that by Zan. And no clear favorites here as so finally, actually, Carl Medaway go down to Amuma again. Enigma cleans up Zan, and the Heavy classes are down by the flank. And Jesus, I mean, just DK cannot wow. seem to stop the bleeding from this flank. Absolutely not. We are seeing a bit more of a focus on these engineers. Boom, Josh just gets roasted by Akuma with a really nice headshot, and this point is free for MTS's taking. Um, both Medic went down, so there's not really much to say in terms of Uber advantages. Both still are on Uber. Mumu gets taken down, tried to walk over the air shot, got stickied instead. I'm telling you, those stickies are hurting, and uh, here we go. DK is moving out with the combo, trying to move across point, seeing what they can do, but little do they know, they you know, they have a sentry to contest, at least in Shudder. They have flank to work with, at least underneath, and we're just, we're just waiting. We're playing the waiting game. They're gonna let them take the point, and I'm sure MTS, once their combo gets back up, once Lunaside and Giraffe, you know, get back into it, they're gonna go in and see what they can do. Of course, Metaway's gonna have the Uber to contest that with, but we'll see. And we got a nice little fight between Enigma and uh, Banny actually on the, on the side. Muma comes in, helps Enigma secure that kill here as he did take down Yo. So taking down that sniper here is we got MTS pushing across the point, but they got to be careful. Uh, DK seeing it that 100% hard blue getting aggressive across point. Draft did go down to a nice snipe from Axiomatic as uh, it looks like DK again doing their underneath hold. It hasn't worked out greatly for them yet. I mean, it's good at kiting again, but they haven't been able to really push out from it. Are they going to be able to push out now? Do they realize what advantage they have? I mean, they're still holding a little bit back. HNG does go down, but MTS is taking so much free ground with this. This is still heavy on point. Finally, the Uber does come up. Zan gets a nice stick. He's onto the combo, chasing him with Banny. Over the top does take down Giraffe. Are they going to be able to get anything more from it? No, they decide to back off, but that's going to leave Hard Blue at 100% and ready to push back in. Most definitely. Honestly, it's just both, all the Ubers looking at them have been really sloppy, it looks like. People have been getting forced, people have just been popping to save a lot of things. We haven't really seen too much thought out tactical stuff. Oh, Yoshi gets a really nice headshot there on Zan, taking him out. And uh, that'll leave that sentry kind of alive going on there. And we are getting a little bit of contesting. Spyro's on point, maybe overextending a little bit. And HNG does get caught out and killed by Katzi's Scorch shot. Of all things, never thought I'd say that in a long time. Yeah, but here we are after that update. I mean, the score shot definitely very viable as Harbalu is sitting at that 100% Uber. They're deciding to hold on to it, uh, which I think is kind of interesting. I, I guess I, I mean, Arshville is a hard map to kind of push aggressively into. You know, it's like you can't really chase uh, it's super effectively here. As Metaway is sitting almost at 100%, 95%, Zan gets pushed back from the central gun. Uber does come out from MTS. 
as they are pushing Enigma onto Xan. Counter pop does come out, and here we go. Xan chasing Enigma across the point. Actually, has a soldier behind as well with a spy trying to do something, but they don't really get anything for that, but they do get the point, and that's what they need as uh, Giraffe coming back here to contest jumps in over the top, gets one sticky, not able to connect actually any of his stickies onto the medic here, as it's just a heavy contesting, but M DK did do a good job of retaking that point. Sort of bleeding off these players in the post stuber DK is just going down a little bit, and they're going to kind of allow MTS to get in there. That sentry is a bit of a deterrent, but it doesn't really matter when there's a sapper and a heavy looking at it. And so there is going to be the point, and here we go, DK is going to sort of push out, see what he can do, and Carl promptly gets headshot by Yoch, brain splattered all over those crates right there, and Banny's going to go in behind and see what he can do. He's going to play through river, maybe he can get a little pressure on. But uh, the point right now is still MTS, and the Uber actually comes out through River. Power Blue Uber that up. Um, not much, not too much happening with it though. Muma takes down Zan, and that was a pretty solid few rockets there. And oh shoot, Metaway went down as well. People just have his number this game. Yeah. yeah uh, what ended up happening is MTS uh, just so MTS was like, all right, you want to hide underneath the point? Well, we're gonna wrap you. So MTS went down DK side of the point, pushed Uber, and took down uh, the combo right there. Metaway and Zan with the help of Muma as well, and just I mean basically crushed them. I mean I think DK I like the underneath play, but you got to be careful about it, especially in the situation where you are at an Uber disadvantage. And Spampet's actually on the enemy uh, bats takes down Axiomatic. I always love to see an aggressive engineer. As Carblue is going to be sitting at 80% here, so they're going to have Uber pretty shortly. But DK did take that point. Basically, so even though Metaway went down, Zan went down, everybody went down. DK is still able to retake that point. Carblue is going to have this 100% pride pushing in pretty shortly here. As uh, the point actually is are pretty close. I felt like this round is very much in deep. I'm sorry, MTS's favor, but it's still a pretty close game as Zan goes down to a nice snipe by Yosh. Absolutely, and oh, here we go. Carblue pops out that Uber. He's going to be moving in. With his scout there, just all the way, Enigma going in deep on Carl. Enigma does go down, but HNG gets a really nice headshot off on Luna side, and so uh, looks like MTS is just gonna push across. They're gonna get the point, and they've got time left on it. They have a minute to hold it. DK's got 48 seconds, and it's just stuff is moving across. Spyro gets taken down, and Giraffe actually gets sniped by Axio across the point there. Both snipers are using the Machina, those convenient little tracer shots so you see where everything's going. And uh, we're just having Banny wins out that scout fight right there, and it looks like DK's gonna try and contest this and see what they can do, but they're just kind of all over the place. They've got Lunacide's contest with on bats, they've got Stiggy's flying everywhere, and that's a significant advantage in Yeah, actually, Carl went away. down there, uh, Zan popped him up in the air, and Carl finished him off with that Natasha while he's still hanging in the air. So that's gonna give a nice advantage here as Medaway did pop this Uber, but it was basically for free as uh, Harblue is going to come back up. They're going to sit at even advantage here, but 36 left, seconds left on the clock with DK controlling the point. That's going to definitely put the pressure on MTS here to be able to re-push out as they are getting the people back onto this ramp side. It'll be interesting to see how DK holds this. They're kind of switching more to the ramp side now, which I kind of like, especially because it gives you that ability to easily spam the point. Muma jumping in over the top, tries to get a rocket onto the combo, but he's going to back off here as the uh, final seconds are ticking down. Big pick on Giraffe there because Harblue is actually on crits right now. He's got 80% in its building. He might be able to get it if he can get his people on point to contest it. And so MTS really needs to move in there. They really need to make stuff happen right about now. And the crits actually gets popped onto Lunaslide. The Thomas Love, the lasers are going on and they're just trying to contest. And you know, nobody's going anywhere near them. They are way wiser than that. MTS just way sages with a nice pipe. And MTS has the point. Yeah, Hakuma with a huge double stab there right before the push by MTS, taking down Harblue and Zan there. So that's gonna, I mean, that really set all of that up. Um, as we're gonna get DK re-pushing onto this point, overtime isn't, well, it's not over in effect, but they just need to recapture this point and they're gonna win the game. Uh, if they do it correctly, but eight seconds left in the clock, four hold by MTS, mini sentry gun over the house. Four seconds left in the clock, they need to get somebody on the point. Akuma again behind Metaway does get to stab onto the point, <gasps> and oh, that might be enough. But is it actually only three alive here? Giraffe in with the crit screen, trying to do something. All they need to do is capture the point. Finally, they're not able to connect with anything. Giraffe goes down as well with Harp Loop. I think my tries are coming down the point, but it's not going to be enough. And finally, oh the my first God. round for DK comes in here. And if Giraffe was able to connect with anything with those crits, they might have been able to save it, but wasn't able to find it. And we are at 2-1 in the favor of MTS here in the first half. I'm telling you, Spyro saved it. He reflected that crit sticky, and he saved his team a lot of hurt right there.
both medics are returning to Uber. Uh, Medaway actually switched to Quick Fix during his last hurrah before he got stabbed out there. And we are getting a little bit of aggression from the Luna side, holding up there on Battlements and sort of standard chokehold over here for Rum DK. Oh, Medaway gets taken down by Akuma, just casually walked up from behind him, and boom, straight through the spine. So that is gonna be great. Hard blue is still up with 40% Uber, and it looks like DK is just sorry, MTS is just gonna walk across this point. There is a wrangled sentry in Shutter, but it's only level one. So that's gonna have to be focused or something before anyone can really get on that point and contest it a little bit more. Yeah, Muma comes over the top, takes down Zan. Carl went down to spam fest as well. Gotta love those engineer plays, always gotta call those out here. Of course. As a level one sentry gun did slow down that push, at least gonna give it, as Akuma's actually gonna decloak right behind the engineer here, get a sap with the gun, coordinate with his team, but he does get caught out by Spyro, so actually that gun's probably gonna, it's gonna go down, because Akuma, I'm sorry, uh, Josh did go down there, point did go down in the favor of MTS finally here, as uh, Harblu actually went down to Aegis. So H is getting back in the game. I think that's his second or third medic pick of the game. So a little bit of back and forth here as uh, Harblu finally kind of getting the best of it as well. But Metaway went down as well to Muma. So both soldiers doing their job. Absolutely. And of course, the Luna side, he's been playing very aggressively, very sort of a Romet, Rumor, H, Enigma, taking down Carl with a few fat uh, scatter shots in the back. And uh, that'll be going down. And HNG takes down Harblu. There you go, what we were talking about pregame with the spy sense. I guess it really holds true and that Hard Blues has a bit of an issue with that. And oh, Giraffe got kind of caught on HNG there as he was trying to back up and died to a rocket. What a play. I don't think we can talk only about Hard Blue and spy sense as Akuma comes in with a second medic pick of this round. And these medics cannot stay alive. We have yet to see an Uber this point, and we probably should have seen at least one or two by this time, as Zan is down as well. Metaway does get back up. Now, they did have that fast respawn because they didn't control the point. Now they do, but it's only going to be controlled for a little bit here as MTS so aggressive on it. Josh goes down pretty quickly trying to peek that corner. As Delaman comes in over, I'm sorry, that's Aegis trying to come in over the top. Uh, as they're trying to get some spam down, but MTS retakes this point, but DK is going to be contesting it pretty quickly. And Harblu actually went down there to H and G again. My goodness, these medics cannot stay alive. Not only did Harblu go down, H and G also got a pick on Luna's side. He's wielding that ambassador like a pro. Headshots right and left, and DK is going to cap this point very easily. And they're going to have a significant 70% advantage roundabout, maybe 80 before Harblu spawns once more. So Muma's going to try and jump in, see what he can do on the flank. And we're just going to set up and see what DK can do with a bit of a hold going on here. Yeah, I want to see DK get a little bit more aggressive mm -hmm. with his Uber. They have yet to use an Uber advantage to kill Harblu. Um, and I think that just, like, it's like a little bit of out of the aggression. Axiomac does get a nice pick onto Giraffe there, and Yosh goes down as well from Banny. So that's going to keep their hold on a little bit longer here as Harblu's getting up 6 minutes. Oh, nice snipe by Axiomac, taking out Enigma mid-air, tosses out the LOL in chat as he got killed by Akuma <laughs> at the same time here. As DK doing a nice job with their hold so far. Oh, absolutely. It looks like they are being quite a bit more flexible, maybe a little bit even more passive, playing more towards their side of underneath the point. And we do have a level 2 being set up, well, is set up on MTS's side, and MTS is going to aggress onto point. Looks like DK is going to try and get in there. They're sort of wrapping around here, and then finally the Uber does get popped out, but so does Harblutes, and they're just going to have an Uber v Uber fight. No frags coming out quite yet. Uh, Banny takes down Yosh there in the midst of Farrakis, and both medics, it looks like they'll escape for now. Escape to live in Uber another day, and Ubers are still completely even, but with MTS taking over that point, getting a bit of a positioning advantage. I don't know, Carl and Katzi are, sorry, Spyro are back here trying to do a little bit of damage. Carl doesn't quite get anyone, though. Yeah, it looks like Mubo came in from behind oh. trying to do something. Actually, look at all this aggression from oh. underneath, and everybody oh. goes down! There as Metaway, Zan, and Pyra, Spyro go down there who are holding underneath. So many people low actually on the MTS side in the red. Aren't they going to be able to stay alive? Probably as only have two alive for DK here. And again, that underneath hold, I mean, it can be very effective, but when the other team kind of plans their strategy, so we had a, somebody from behind, somebody from the front, you get pinched in that underneath area, you're not going to stay alive there. As Harblu also went down, I'm trying to see, I mean, he must have went down. He doesn't have any Uber charge right now as Metaway is at 30%. Did you see how Harblu went down? I did not, I did not see it. No, I, I honestly didn't think he did. He just wasn't healing for the longest time. I think he got disconnected from people. He was alive. HNG is being cheeky right there, all up in the combo, and he does get a really nice stab on Giraffe there, allow his team to sort of move in. And here we go. 
Muma jumping and see what he can do. And man, Metaway went down to about 70 right there, I swear. And DK is going to be able to take this point, but they're really going to have to change up the way they hold. Obviously, holding in water isn't working out for them, so they're gonna have to rethink it. And it looks like they are sort of sitting in choke, doing what they can. Although the problem with them sitting in choke is that Moom has just been so aggressive. That's probably the issue, honestly. Yeah, one interesting thing is Banny is currently top damaging, and Aegis actually just a little bit behind Zan there. So, yeah, I think our flank classes for DK are definitely stepping up, as we do have the Ubers exchange out here on the ramp side, but who's it going to come out in the favor of? Looks like it's going to get DK out the better of this, as actually Draft gets a nice pipe onto Banny, who is getting pinched in there, and now DK actually looks pretty bad, banged up here, as they're only four alive, which is some respawns getting in here, and 25 seconds left in the clock, but this should be coming out in the favor of MTS, and oh, so many going down here for DK. They gotta be careful not get mid away to go down here, because they're gonna need oh. as Mubo comes from behind, but he does get stays, stays alive with the help of his demo man and soldier here, as a point goes back in the favor of MTS. 35 seconds left from the clock. That was really close. Mubo always almost had a really big play there. I thought for sure we'd get at least a kill on someone, but not quite. And here we are, just more aggression, moving in across the point. Enigma trying to fight stave off Banny there, going in through water, and it looks like we're just, it, it's down to the one. Both teams, 10 seconds, and oh, the Uber finally gets popped off. Both Ubers actually finally get popped off. We have Attack of the Shiny People here on point, seeing what they can do. Katsy goes down, Spyro goes down as well, so no more Pyro is air blasting here. But it does look like DK has a bit of an advantage there with that sentry gun, keeping people off the point. And Spam Fest, he has his little mini setup there, but he gets taken out by Axio. And so I think they might be able to hold this. It's an overtime, but please just cap the point. All right, we do have a cap. We do have a cap on the point. We have 10 seconds left on the clock, and DK. While I was talking about that, they were just bleeding players right and left. A just goes down. It's only Banny and H and G. And are there any going to be any sort of big plays? H and G going in there. Banny trying to get something done. He takes down Luna side, but it just won't be enough. And that is the cap. And there we go, GHs are called out as that is the half. 3-1 in the favor of MTS there. That double overtime finisher to that round here. And it kind of just seems like, you know, that's kind of the, the trickiness behind when you're pushing on to that final point is that if you do lose a lot of players before taking that final point due to the spawn time, so when you control the point, uh, your spawn times are about double the enemy team. So, you know, they're losing players, losing players, losing players, but then the spawn time gets flipped mid-death, like, you know, while you're dead, while you're waiting to respawn to that long spawn timer. And that's going to be just enough time as it was so close. You know, it's they look to be so good, but then, yeah, I mean, they just lost so many players in that in-between here as now we're going to be sitting with MTS uh, with a nice advantage. And, I mean, i, I got to be... Uh, let's see if we can pull up the stats here. I, I just got to say something. I have the stats up. I'm looking at it right now, and I just have to tell everyone that HNG out-headshot Axio. <laughs> that half. 30 to 21 headshots. Crazy, yo. Yeah, HNG definitely doing work. I mean, this is also just to say... Not to take anything away from Axio or, or anything away from H&G, but this is definitely a little bit more in the favor of uh, a, a spy sniping map than than uh, mm -hmm. sniper map, just because it's so difficult to get in a comfortable spot. And I mean, no team has really been able to kind of sit in one place. Like it's like, all right, we're going to sit here now. We're going to contest it right away. And you know, it, it kind of rattles snipers not to be able to ever get very comfortable. But one thing that definitely stands out to me uh, on this stat page that I I was not expecting was Banny actually top fragging in the first half with 44 frags, about 9 more than Enigma, and about 1,000 more damage than Enigma as well. I haven't been saying Banny's name a lot, but he's definitely doing work. Um, I, I noticed him that last round where he's getting really close up there, but really nice job by Banny, uh, definitely doing his, holding his own on that flank. Oh, absolutely. And of course, Zan just putting out disgusting amounts of damage. Gosh, 583 DPM. I mean, it's demo. It's a cough map, and stickies are good again. Hallelujah, I guess. I remember when they got nerfed <laughs> a year ago, and everyone was going absolutely nuts about it, but Demo is back. Yeah, <sighs> it's it's scary. Uh, gosh. Uh, one one big thing I see difference-wise here, and we kind of, I mean, we definitely alluded to it in the game, is that Metaway died 19 times compared to Harblu, who died 10 times. It's about two more deaths, uh, or twice as many deaths as Harblue there, and that definitely is working against them. I think 
Um, you know, and even the assists kind of reflect that slightly there, but I don't know. I don't, I mean, a lot of it, it, it seems like it's kind of been shifting. Like first it was Muma and then it was, now it's like Akuma. And I don't know, it just, I think it's also kind of their position, their desire to not stay on the ramp side. But even when they don't stay on the ramp side, like Muma's finding them, Akuma's finding them, like they're, they're still dying. Like it's not, I think that the underneath hold is not working out for them. Absolutely. And you know, it's not like any other Koth map. You can't play Asheville like you play Viaduct or something where, you know, you stand here, you hold here. You just have to be in a constant flux, constantly moving around. And people will people will always be behind. That's the thing. Somebody's always going to be in lobby. Somebody's al- always going to be underneath bath. Somebody's always going to be peeking. And so you just really have to have a bit more of a fluid, more, you know, responsive play style as a team to deal with that, I think. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm just looking at the stats right now. I wanted, I was kind of curious to see what the breakdown would be. Muma, with a massive eight medic kills. Eight. Like, that is astounding and should never happen also. I mean, like, one <laughs> round, eight medic kills. Enigma at four and Akuma at four as well. So, you know, that's kind of like the three main culprits for the deaths to Medaway. Whereas, you know, let's see, it's like H&G, Banny... Aegis and Axiomatic basically all at two H and G with three there. So that's kind of spread out a little bit more so between the other classes, but I mean eight frags. Eight. Eight on the yeah. mech. I, I just I feel like they need to do I mean, I think they did better in the last round or two, but some they gotta do something. They gotta switch it up something. And I think honestly it comes to hold hold style. I think they need to switch over to the ramp side and stop trying to hold underneath as their main hold. Yeah, or maybe even holding up on bats. I saw MTS doing quite a bit of work there, sort of up on bats, having their heavy rain down. And Muma has just been going in deep. He's been flying across this map, going all the way back behind their bats into their lobby, and just being in really strange places at strange times, which I guess is, you know, a great trait for a Highlander soldier, but it's not exactly working out in DK's favor. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting to see that. I mean, a, a good soldier... Or I shouldn't say a good soldier, but one really good soldier playstyle in Highlander is just to be that distraction play, to be that annoying guy who you have to come deal with because he's not dying easy. You know, I I'd often see Muma kind of just holding behind enemy lines, just trying to, like, stay alive and then wait for the right time to jump and stuff like that. Right. Um, and, it, and it's definitely working out for the favor. Is there any other kind of stat lines that are jumping out at, uh, to you from these, uh, from these logs? Hmm. Um. I will say something about the crits. I, w- I wish we got to see a little bit more of a crits play. Unfortunately, the one got dropped and the other one got popped onto Lunaside. who didn't really quite do anything with it. But it was uh, a lot of flux here with unlocks, I've been noticing. katsy has been using that uh, Scorch Shot pardon to, you know, sort of harass people across the point. I noticed Spies got caught out quite a bit by it. And so that's definitely an advantage. The Thomas Love is being run religiously by Lunaside, who... It's been working out for him. He's been going down fairly often, though. I think looking at the stats, he has a fairly decent amount. And welcome back. I sorry for that little technical glitch. We only missed a few seconds here as we are back in the game with MTS Ubering across the point. Counter Uber coming out from the DK side as the job surfing underneath down to 41 HP is going to be able to get out alive grabbing that med pack here. And MTS is going to be able to hold onto this point in which we have uh, this. I'm trying to see who we have in the background. Looks like we have the spy and potentially Muma back there as he takes down H and G. And yeah, just some good work, and Zan goes down as well. But uh, it's MTS doing a really good job at, with DK having this game on the line, and they have not been able to get this point at all with a minute 30 off the clock. Absolutely, Giraffe. The DK just sort of went straight back down to that underneath hold, and with Giraffe up on that house, raining down into Shutter, and the other and the other combo wrapping from behind them, they just they just had to back out completely. And through that, Metaway actually went down, and he just spawned again recently. So he's going to be going out with his team. Oh, gets stabbed by Akuma straight out of spawn. Have fun looking at that respawn timer for a little while more. 
and uh, that is most definitely leaves a lot of time for MTF, a lot of time up on that point. Harblue has 100% advantage, Carl gets headshot by Yosh, but I don't think that matters all too much as there is going to be straight up aggression from NTS into the water area and just sort of wiping the floor with DK right now in terms of frags. Yeah, this might be the swan, swan song for DK here, as it is not looking good for them. They need this round to be able to keep into the game. They're down 1-3 to three against MTS here. MTS, they just need to take this, as they are holding on to that 100% Uber. Soldier coming over the top, trying to do something, does take down Yosh. So that's going to help out. Uh, actually, the scout behind enemy lines here onto the bats. Enigma trying to dance to keep himself alive, but does go down as Banny finally getting on the point. We do have MTS holding underneath the point, but so many frags came out in the favor of MTS. Uber does finally come out, but I said Metaway went down to Luma there a little bit earlier. And again, just DK has yet to be able to get an Uber this round. 12 seconds left on the clock, and I don't even know if DK's heart in it is in it. As the count's just coming down, nobody's on the point. Pyro runs out onto it, trying to do something Banny as well. Level 1 Sentry Gun spamming the point. Soldier comes in over the top for MTS. So many frags him now. Metaway does go down again. H&G goes down. Carl goes down. Zan's alone, and he's going to die. And there we go. Oh. A perfect round for MTS here as GG's are called out. 4-1 in the favor of MTS. That was, that was painful, that last round, man. That was, that hurt. Yeah, that, that <laughs> was, that, that... <laughs> That made the Indian cry, you know, the trash on the ground, like, mm. uh, just, that was, that was a terrible round. Like, I mean, it was great for MTS, terrible for GK. I mean, that was exactly what you wanted. And I mean, the kill that happened, um, the second kill, so Metaway went down, respawned, Akuma then decloaked behind him, like in a pub, you know, or <laughs> right. Deer is so famous for, literally decloaked behind him as he's going up the stairs. Uh, got the stab, which is just always the worst way to die. I've had it happen to me before. You know, you always feel like you should hear it, but with comms and everything, it can kind of mask the sound here. As uh, DK, oh, that was uh, that was sad. Yeah, and of course MTS taking DK's strat and using it against them, wrapping them, having their demo up on that house, spamming down, it just it blocked them off completely. And you know what could you do? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Actually, Yosh uh, did a really good job that round with eight frags, Akuma at six, Enigma at six, and Giraffe at five. The first person to even touch that scoreline is Carl, who got five for DK. So MTS, I mean, not only they obviously would dominate that in stat line, but it just, I don't even really, I mean, it kind of was like Metaway would die, but it seemed like DK just didn't have that ability to like, okay, Metaway's dead, like, let's go push for the Medic, or, you know, it's kind of hard to say exactly what went wrong for them at yeah. that, that point, but... Nothing really went right. Maybe that, <laughs> like I, I think that's a good way of putting it. And they just they just blood players in previous rounds when the Ubers did get popped off and Metaway would get in there. It was just it, sorry. Um, it just you know people would just bleed out afterwards. And people getting frags, you know, getting fragged at. Sorry, a little bit afterwards, a little bit before, and it just there wasn't really as much cohesion as I would have liked to see from a team that's been together for quite a long time. Yeah, I mean, it'll definitely be interesting to see this matchup if they do have the ability to meet in playoffs. I definitely think they're both obviously going to get into playoffs. Um, but, you know, in, in MTS, I mean, they play a hyper-aggressive play style. I think Muma was a huge game-changer, picking him off, up off a boat and that kind of that play style. Enigma and Banny duked it out. Uh, Banny probably getting a little bit of the better of it in terms at least of the stat line. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it just was like kind of a close game. I felt like DK... They just, as I said, I didn't really like their positioning all that much. I mean, it kind of just kept not working, and, and they didn't really mix it up. But also, I mean, I guess when your medic dies twice as much, it kind of makes it hard for you to do anything right. I mean, even if even if you do have the right position, even if it would work normally, you know, just not able to keep your medic alive. And, I mean, who that really boils down to can be a lot of different things. That can be positioning. That can be maybe your combo is not protecting you. Um, a lot of different things. And these are the questions that DK are going to have to ask themselves after this game because... You know, if this is what they're going to look like come playoff time, there's no way they're going to be able to take the championship. And I think a lot of people, myself included, put them at having, you know, winning it. But after this game, MTS, incredibly strong uh, and kind of showing their strength for the final uh, for the finals if they make it out there. Oh, absolutely. Their new pickups definitely proved that they were worth their weight in salt. And there goes DK's 6-0 season so far, marred by a nice 6-1 there. That round robin style is really getting interesting as it comes down to it as we get closer to playoffs. So, 
Yeah, everybody kind of drawing blood. I don't. Does that mean uh, I have to look at? I'm trying to try to pull this up real quickly. Does this mean that we are going to have no undefeated teams now? Or hold on one sec. Let's see if we can look this up as we're. You say something. I got. I'm going to look this up real quick. Something. Okay. Well, um, definitely. I'm going to throw some shout outs out there as Sigafu looks things up. Uh, shout out to both teams tonight. It it was it was a fun game, even if it was a bit of a meat grinder to look at. Both MTS and DK were playing their hearts out, and especially with an update coming out so close to you know match time, it's good that we started you know fairly on schedule. And um, absolutely, thank you for casting me, and thank you to all our viewers who are talking about all their winnings on Saloon.tf. I'm sure I think it was a bit of an upset on Saloon, so yeah, I'm sure slight. people are happy with their skins. Yeah, just slightly. I believe they had MTS at 45%, DK at about 55%. Uh, and yeah, actually, MTS is going to be remain the only undefeated team in the league. So this was a battle of the undefeated. DK was also undefeated. They're going to take their first loss. Now, uh, the... Yeah, because they lost, I believe... I thought MTS lost to Boat. Or no, they they, they beat Boat on uh, Viaduct, but that went to a bye week because Boat uh, broke up. And they still have a game to plan upward, is my understanding, potentially. But either way... MTS remaining undefeated, and their only matchup that can potentially contest that, I mean, they have AMW next week, Silver Savages the week after, but then K&D uh, on upward, it looks like, on their schedule. Week 9 is going to be probably the matchup, and K&D's only chance is going to have that chance to knock MTS off of their perfect season schedule, which MTS has kind of traditionally been like a lackluster you know, season team, like they kind of like, okay, like they'll do good enough to get in the playoffs and they kind of turn it on right. uh, in the playoffs, but they've been doing pretty good uh, regardless all season long. Absolutely. But the thing with KD, I've heard they've been having some roster switch ups as well. I can't remember off the top of my head, but I know there's a bit of changing going on. So Platt is definitely in a bit of a state of a flux right now. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I think that is all we have for here. Uh, is there anything else you want to shout out yourself? Mm, nothing but other th nothing other than thank you for casting with me, Sigafu. It's been a pleasure. It's nice to get back into it. Yeah, it was. It was really nice to have you out here uh, and get you out on a platinum matchup here. We'll have to have you out sometime else in the season. Uh, give some hearts in chat here, guys, for Dashner always being so lovely and awesome on camera. Give him some shout outs and chat uh i guess i have nothing else to add in from myself and the evl crew uh thank you so much for tuning in you tuning in and we will see you next week